That's not their problem. That's not their problem. Okay, it's 6.01, so we're going to open this hearing for the uh, Littleton Parking Commission. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, I will introduce the members of the Parking Commission. Um, Alex will be circulating um, sign-up sheets so that uh, we have a list of everybody who was uh, gracious enough to attend tonight. And if you uh, think that you're going to want to make comments or ask questions, if you just kind of put a check mark next to your name, uh, it won't be limited to that, but we will call on uh, people in the order that they're on the list. Uh, and if you didn't check that you thought you wanted to ask a question, you can still do so. Uh, I'd like to start by introducing the members of the Parking Commission. Ron Hemingway, Littleton Citizen, Austin Bailey, our Parking Enforcement Officer, I'm sure you all know him. Um, Chad Stearns, uh, who's not here tonight. Jim McMahon is our Chair, he is at a, a Zoning Board meeting tonight which uh, came up urgently, so he will join us later, we hope. Uh, Mary Nancy, Littleton resident. And uh, we would like to uh, thank Alex Bellins from the North Country Council who has done invaluable work helping us with this, uh, doing the studies and most of the writing and everything. Um, the way we will run things is, as I said, sign up sheets, we'll call on people in order. Please uh, listen and hold your questions till the end. It's very possible that your questions will be answered during Alex's presentation. So please, uh, please hold comments and questions till the end. And um, we will call on people. Everyone will get one chance. And if you have something else to say, you'll get a second chance after everyone else has had their first chance. Uh, you will have the opportunity to submit comments in writing. Um, after tonight, uh, we, we will accept written comments uh, via email or letter or drop them off at the North Country Council, however you would like. We'll accept those through June 20th. Um, please do keep your comments tonight to a reasonable length. Um, if we get to 8 o'clock and we're not done, uh, we will have the right to continue the hearing to a different date and time. And we will uh, take your comments and, and feedback tonight and we will discuss that all at another meeting of the Parking Commission and hopefully uh, make any changes that need to be made and get our recommendations in to the select board. Um, I think that's it. Alex, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Um, as Mary said, my name is Alex Glenn, I'm a planner at North Country Council Regional Planning Commission. Uh, we're the Regional Planning Commission for Northern New Hampshire. We serve uh, 50 towns in the northern part of the state. Um, provide a variety of services to them, including um, transportation planning. Um, so I'm the transportation planner. Um, and I uh, had the good fortune to work with this group uh, over the course of about a year to develop this plan. Um, and so I'm just going to lead you through what we came up with tonight. Um, we're going to provide a little overview and background of the project tonight, um, kind of why, how this came to be, and uh, what was going on uh, at the time the Park Commission was created. Uh, we're going to go over the study we did of parking in downtown, um, and then we're going to go over the recommendations that we have uh, for the town related to parking. Um, as Mary mentioned, the public comment portion will be at the end, so we're asking folks that, to reserve comments um, until then. Um, written comments uh, can be submitted up through June 20th. Um, that is my email. It's also, if you go on the town website and look at the notice for this, you can get all the information on how to contact me uh, with any additional feedback. Um, a draft of the plan, the full text, can be viewed on the Town of Littleton website as well. Um, and I'm going to be moving through uh, what we covered pretty quickly tonight. Um, and so if you do have questions, we can always circle back to something and we can go into a little more detail. But you can also take a look at the plan that has a lot of detailed information as well. Um, so we're giving folks the option that you can speak tonight, write your comments, or you can uh, send them to us in the um, So I want to acknowledge the work of the Littleton Parking Commission uh, as a volunteer commission who met um, on a bi-monthly basis uh, for almost a year um, to uh, come up with this plan. 
Um, we also got a lot of support from uh, municipal staff, uh, particularly Andrew Dorsett, the town manager, and his staff. Um, Chief Paul Smith of the Logan Police Department um, provided a lot of valuable insight and information as well. Um, we want to thank the town residents who uh, came to um, the forums we had um, and who reached out via phone and email to provide their input as well. Um, this is all possible thanks to your participation. So to quickly go over the um, kind of how we came to have a parking commission and why we did a parking plan. Uh, in May of 2018, the Wilkins Select Board created a parking commission. Uh, there have been topics of discussion coming up at Select Board meetings for the parking, and they didn't necessarily feel like they had a lot, enough information to um, really lead one way or another or uh, take any specific action. So they uh, created a parking commission uh, with a, a pretty thorough charge. Um, the charge included developing an overall public parking plan for the downtown area. Um, making recommendations for funding, uh, for parking activity fund to pay for parking improvements, looking at longer term capital improvements planning, so multi year budgeting to improve infrastructure, um, making recommendations related to special parking districts, we'll talk about that a little bit tonight, uh, promoting communication and exchange of ideas and concerns related to parking, and acting to promote the public awareness of parking. Uh, so our project that we uh, embarked on subsequent to that charge being uh, levied to the group uh, was basically two parts, uh, do a parking study, um, understand what the existing conditions are on the ground related to parking in the town, um, and then use the results of that study to inform a parking plan. Um, so it took place over the course of about a year. Um, like I said, these folks volunteered their times, uh, their time to this effort. Um, funding for my time, 90% came through uh, our contract with the State Department of Transportation. Uh, they set aside money for us to help communities with, and tackle these types of challenges. Uh, and then the town chipped in 10% using uh, basically parking meter fees. Um, and as I mentioned a couple times, many volunteer hours went to us. We all this plan. Um, so before we dive into it, I do want to just talk about what this plan is and what it isn't. Um, so at its core, it's basically a toolkit of potential strategies that the town can use towards the management of parking, um, developing projects, um, looking at funding. Um, it's kind of just, you know, it can be almost looked at as just a list of a toolkit of strategies. Um, we base it on our study and the public input we received, um, and it's advisory in nature. So we tonight are not changing town policies or, or officially starting any projects or spending any money. This is an advisory document for the select board to um, and for the town, um, basically with what we view as a vision for parking and um, how to improve it. Uh, so as mentioned, no, we're not spending any money tonight. We're not changing any ordinances. We are basically we're looking at a list of, of recommendations. Um, to uh, staff, to the select board, and to those who have the ability to uh, actually implement some changes. So uh, I'm going to go quickly through um, the study of parking that we did. Um, like I said, there's a lot more detailed information in the plan. I'm just going to hit the key highlights, and I'm going to go through it pretty quickly just because there is a lot to cover. Um, so when we did the parking study, there was a couple of key questions that we wanted to answer. Um, one is, how much parking is there? Um, how is that parking being used? Uh, what are the town policies related to parking? Um, how is public parking managed and funded? And what does the public and local community, uh, business community have to say about parking downtown? So uh, getting at the first question, we started with a parking inventory. Um, so this map shows our study area um, and uh, basically an inventory of all the parking in the downtown area. Um, and so our study area basically goes a little ways down West Main Street, past the junction of Meadow Street, all the way over uh, down Main Street to Union Street, to Cross Street. Uh, we go up as high as High Street in the residential area north of Main Street, uh, across the river, um, and looking at River Glen Lane area as well, uh, with a focus really kind of on the Main Street area and River District. Um, so there's a legend here, there's kind of a lot going on in terms of what types of parking are shown, but basically the gray um, squares and, and polygons are all private parking, and then the rest are different forms of public parking, which I'm going to go into now. Um, so through that inventory, uh, we estimated that the total available parking in the downtown is about 2,225 vehicles. Um, this doesn't include uh, like residential driveways um, and parking and you know, kind of uh, more informal parking you know, in vacant lots or on people's yards or whatever like that. Uh, but it's really more what's kind of dedicated infrastructure that's there more broadly for the public. Um, private parking, about 1,300 spaces, uh, covers about 60% of the available parking. Um, that includes parking for businesses that are specific for a specific business, uh, parking for tenants, um, and employee-only parking. 
Um, public parking, we've broken into two categories. One is the formal public parking, so that's, um, for example, parking uh, on the Pleasant Street. Um, there's strikes, parking lots. Um, people know that it's a public lot there. It's explicitly there for the purpose of public parking. Um, that can be broken out into free public parking, a little over 200 spaces, and meter parking spaces. There's 132 of those. Then informal public parking, um, that's about 25% of all the parking in downtown. That includes uh, lots that are currently private, um, but are generally used by the public. Um, it, but there might not necessarily be a formal agreement there allowing that. Um, it includes unstriped on-street parking, so um, the parking that's available um, on some of the residential roads along Union Street. Um, that is available for folks to park, but since it's not striped, people may not know that it's available. Um, and parking at public entities or organizations. So for example, park, parking at the library during business hours, and that's really just supposed to be for the library, but you can park there after business hours. So that's our whole breakdown of what's out there in terms of parking. Um, in our inventory, we also looked at um, some of the some uh, other components of parking. So we looked at, at signage. Um, we saw that the public parking lots on Pleasant Street were pretty well signed, um, but overall, um, other public parking areas uh, are generally lacking in signage, uh, particularly in the River District. Um, parking lots on Clay Street um, in the community house parking lot here all um, could benefit from um, having some improved signage. Pedestrian access, we want to make sure people can um, get out of their car and go to where they're going safely. Um, we found it's adequate for most public parking areas. There's sidewalks and crosswalks. Um, Clay Street, um, it's kind of up a steep hill. There's no dedicated pedestrian space in terms of sidewalk or anything like that. Um, so that's kind of the gap that may be preventing people from using that lot. Uh, lighting, uh, lighting is a concern we've heard about from folks. Um, Overall, um, the found that lighting is generally adequate. Um, there's been some recent improvements um, in the Pleasant Street lots to add lighting. Um, Clay Street is, is still an issue. Uh, a lot of the lights there just don't work at the moment. Um, and then infrastructure, condition, and aesthetics. We want the lots to be attractive to encourage people to use them so that they feel safe. Um, and a lot of parking areas, public parking areas could benefit from uh, some improved pavement or striping um, and just some better maintenance is what we found. So we went out and we saw, okay, what is parking in downtown, where is it, um, and what's the condition, and then we wanted to see how is it being used. So we did a study of uh, what we call utilization of parking. Uh, we did counts on weekend days and weekdays um, on a one and a half hour interval, starting at 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We looked at public parking lots, on street parking, and then if we could see into a part of the parking lot from the road, uh, we did a count there, but we didn't enter private property. We were able to get most of the town um, using that stretch, or most of the downtown area. Um, for our analysis, we basically uh, binned what we saw into a couple different categories. So if a lot was between zero and 60% full, uh, we consider that underutilized. It means there's a lot of just extra space that it's not being used. 60 to 80% is a little bit better, but we still consider that somewhat underutilized in terms of the space. The ideal utilization is about 80 to 90% full. It means most of the spaces are occupied, but somebody driving by can see that there's a space and they can go in the park. At capacity is about 90 to 100 percent, so 100 percent means obviously there's no space left. 90 percent, someone driving by might not necessarily see that there is an open space um, and may not go in, and over capacity is pretty self-explanatory. Um, so what that turned, uh, what that looked like in terms of findings, um, our high demand areas are really the eastern portion of Main Street, uh, Green Street down to Cottage Street. Um, and the River District uh, were really the, the high demand areas. Uh, there are some public parking areas that were at capacity during kind of the peak periods of demand. Um, those were midday uh, on weekdays and weekends and uh, on weekend evenings. Um, but some public parking areas were consistently underutilized at all times of day and days a week. Um, and we saw more demand for public parking on weekend days versus weekdays overall. Uh, private parking overall largely underutilized uh, throughout the town uh, with a couple uh, exceptions. Um, that formal public parking that we talked about, which is the, you know, the dedicated public lots that are striped and people know it's public parking, overall we look at all of them, the most that they were full was 78%, and that is a variation of, you know, some of them were full, some of them were uh, very underutilized. Um, you can always find formal public parking within a two to three minute walk of Eastern Main Street River District. So you couldn't necessarily always find parking right at your destination, but you could find it within a short walk. And the meter parking we found to be pretty ideally utilized uh, even during the peak times. Um, so what we did is we, if you look at the plan, there's maps that look like this that basically are showing those different categories of utilization. So if you remember the blue uh, is kind of the underutilized, um, green is ideal, and uh, the orange and red means it's at capacity or over capacity. 
so the absolute busiest time we found uh, is weekends from 12.30 p.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, so you can see over here is uh, the lots off of Pleasant Street. Uh, both of those were, full, were typically full during those times. Um, the eastern part of portion of Main Street, uh, all the on-street parking is typically used. Um, and then in the River District, uh, on Amnusic Street, Porter Street, and Green Street, uh, most of those lots were full at this time as well. Uh, if you look just a little outside that area, um, a lot of the private parking is pretty underutilized at that time, and there are some public parking lots that are not being utilized either. So the Clay Street lot is not being used, um, the community house lot is not really being used. Um, to give you an example of kind of mid-peak time, so that was kind of the absolute peak we saw. Um, a mid-peak time, weekend 3.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. If you look over on where Pleasant Street is, um, those lots are now varying between ideally utilized and underutilized. Um, so there's plenty of spaces in there. The River District is still pretty in demand at this time, especially on Music Street. Uh, but the parking in Green Street is a little more available, and there's spaces open on Main Street. And if you look at the complete off-peak time, so the least busiest time to be found, uh, weekends 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., um, pretty much the only spot the places you see where it's full is a couple little sections of Main Street. Otherwise, uh, everything's pretty much wide open. Um, and so if you, if you go through the plan, well, you can kind of flip through this um, on weekend days and weekdays to kind of see how the demand uh, increases and falls. But overall, we're seeing that those lots on the, the kind of the Eastern Main Street, River District, and the lots on Pleasant Street is kind of where the demand is, and after that, it falls off pretty quick. Um, this is just a quick graph of meter parking. So um, across the bottom are different times of days. The blue spaces are um, spaces that are occupied, and the gray are empty spaces. Uh, so on a weekend, at the busiest time, you had 76 uh, meter parking spaces on Main Street full. Um, and 18 empty spaces. And so that's about ideal. Um, you know, it means that uh, most of that space is being used for parking, um, but if someone driving down the main street could uh, go in and find it. Um, but as you saw on the maps, as you move farther to the east, a lot of that, um, at that peak time, it's a little more demand. So this is looking at all of Main Street. Um, if you look at the community house on Porter Street, which is in the other graph, um, not quite as in demand, um, at about two thirds full of the people. So we looked at where there's parking, looked at how it's being used. Um, we wanted to look at what's going on in terms of projects in the town either going on now or in the future that could affect the uh, supply of parking or the demand. Uh, so there's a number of efforts going on at the town of Littleton. Uh, we mentioned the lighting improvements on Pleasant Street to improve the safety of those lots. Um, the big project on Saranac Street to improve the roadway and pedestrian improvements. Um, they're providing some on-street parking there, um, but there's thought that that's by connecting that uh, via the pedestrian network, you're going to see a lot more development in that area um, since it's a lot easier to get down there, so that could increase the demand for parking. Um, the town uh, voted to purchase the Hillview Terrace uh, property um, to expand the parking lot there over uh, by the theater. Um, the, uh, there was about ten thousand dollars approved at a town meeting this year to for lot maintenance, for lot maintenance. Um, about twenty thousand dollars of debt service was voted to be removed from the parking meter funds, and that's going to free that money up for improvements. Um, the Amnusic Rail Trail extension project um, that could have an impact in terms of uh, access to the trail and who's able to get into downtown. We'll talk about that later. Um, and Main Street Phase Two is a project that town is pursuing to um, do some roadway improvements on the eastern or the western portion of Main Street, and that could help formalize on street parking. A couple of things going on: um, federal opportunity zone designation. Um, this is um, a real estate investment incentive program that came through with the um, most recent uh, tax bill uh, approved by the Trump administration, uh, and has a lot of tax incentives for investment in businesses and real estate. Um, and it's a new thing, but there's um, some thought that that could really um, lead to a lot more business investment, real estate investment in Littleton. Um, the Hitchner Complex Redevelopment, um, that's an ongoing process, but if um, White Mountain Community College goes in there, um, you could have a lot more people coming to downtown. And there's been some recent commercial down developments uh, kind of throughout the downtown, but particularly in the Cottage Street area. Um, so that's kind of what we're all looking at in terms of what's kind of the future, um, what it does it look at like a couple of years from now, parking demand is flat. We looked at ordinances and policies related to um, parking. Uh, so the traffic regulation ordinance uh, defines what the parking violations are and the fines, sets meter fees and the times at which they're collected. Right now it's 9 to 5, Monday through Saturday. Current rate is 25 cents an hour, which is, uh, is, is about as low as you'll see um, in areas that have parking meters. Uh, there's a whole schedule of fines um, in there uh, for various violations. 
and it defines the duty of the uh, pertinent enforcement, uh, per pertinent enforcement officer. Um, we have the zoning ordinance. Uh, zoning ordinance doesn't really address parking at this time. Um, there's non-mandatory recommended lot features where um, the zoning board can suggest to applicants um, you know, to make sure that they have a, a safe parking lot, uh, or attractive parking lot. Um, no requirements related to the number of parking spaces in the second group. Uh, parking meter fund. So um, this is the, the fund that the town approves on an annual basis via warrant article. It's funded by parking meter fees and fines. Uh, typically, the town receives and spends about $60,000 out of that fund. Um, there was a small surplus in 2017, but typically all the funds are expended. Um, the major expenditures on that are basically paying for Austin's time to um, enforce parking. Well, there's some money going to maintenance of parking and sidewalks, and there is that, that service in there that was removed. So that is going to free up some funding. Uh, we took, um, kind of took our show on the road back in the fall and, um, and uh, invited our, the public and the local business community to come in and talk to us about parking. Uh, had a lot of good conversations um, at those meetings. Um, and this is basically a, a high-level summary of uh, what we heard. Um, and we provide some more um, examples of feedback in the plan, but this is kind of the, if we're going to summarize into one slide. Um, so what we heard is parking is generally more difficult for visitors and residents. So residents a lot of times know where um, to find parking, but visitors uh, or customers of businesses may not necessarily know where you can find free parking or uh, available parking. Um, residents said they were typically able to park an acceptable walking distance from the destination, and most people said that a two to three minute walk was acceptable. Um, as residents, we didn't uh, we're really able to get in much way of customers with um, a, a form like that. Um, pretty broad agreement that signage and online information need to be improved. Um, we generally heard support for modest increase to the parking meter fees. We didn't, not everybody agreed with that, but overall, most people seem to support that. Uh, there's good debate regarding minimum parking requirements in the zoning code and whether or not that's something we should look at. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, a lot of support for improving lighting and pedestrian access where it needs to be improved, um, getting at some safety concerns. Um, support for low cost strategies to expand the parking supply so we can provide more parking. Um, general agreement that high demand for parking is, is a good problem to have. It means that people are wanting to come to town, they're coming to town. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a growing pain issue almost in a way. You know, as the town continues to grow and, and do, do well, um, parking is something that you know, needs to be managed. So that's the study. Uh, I know I went through a lot of information real quick and we kind of moved back and folks have additional questions, but now I'm going to get into um, the recommendations that came up uh, with the plan. So a lot of these relate back to uh, the findings of the study. Um, as part of this process, we developed a series of vision statements, and this is really kind of trying to drill down to what are the goals for this plan, essentially. Um, so um, the commission came up with three vision statements. First one is parking down in Littleton will be safe, convenient, adequate, and affordable for residents, visitors, employees, and customers. Uh, public parking downtown Littleton will be well promoted and easily navigated by all potential users. And the town of Littleton will remain informed and responsive to changes in parking conditions in the downtown area. Uh, we also came up with a series of six objectives. So these are kind of more specific, actionable um, you know, objectives that we're, we're looking at, you know, what could actually be done to um, uh, implement that vision. So objective one, improve utilization of existing public parking areas through promotion. Objective two, uh, expand the supply of available parking. Uh, number three, improve the safety of public parking areas. Four, support parking projects and maintenance through capital improvements planning and increased revenues. Uh, improve the management and enforcement of public parking areas and improve, improve coordination between the key town entities um, with respect to parking. So um, when we get into our recommendations, which are basically the, um, the specific uh, proposals um, that we're laying out that would implement those vision and objectives, um, on each of the slides you're going to see a little graphics. Um, those are related to the cost of the proposal and um, whether this is something that's a short-term uh, proposal or, or longer term. Uh, so the low cost strategies we're looking at, and which is where we're really trying to focus, are those that we think could be implemented for less than about $10,000. Um, medium cost, 10000 to 250000 so that's something that um, might have to be looked at longer term for budgeting. High cost would be over $250,000. Um, and then short, medium, long term. Short term is kind of um, you know, within a, a year or two. Medium to two to five years long term is looking really kind of pretty uh, far at this point. Um, we also have some funding sources in there too. Um, 
a lot of these were think were uh, were believed could be funded through the parking meter fund, uh, but some might require some longer term budgeting or more articles or or pursuing outside funding uh, grants and things of that nature. So, um, and just a kind of describe our overall approach to the recommendations. Um, there's a pretty big focus on low and moderate cost strategies. Um, we think that there's a lot that can be done kind of just with utilizing the existing parking and resources that are available. Um, and we're looking to offset the project or end policy costs that may be associated with our recommendations using um, the revenues that are available from the parking meters and fines. <coughs> So, um, recommendations under our objective number one, we're looking at improving utilization. Um, so, uh, not surprising, uh, we think there could be some improvements to signage in public parking areas, um, particularly the River District, um, Mill Street, um, and uh, the Community House. Um, and, and a lot of it is just thinking creatively about where are people seeking parking and, and where can be strategically placed signage to make sure that they are aware of their of parking nearby that they may not be able to see. Um, we also were looking at uh, doing some sort of gateway signage, which an example of which is that picture there, which is as you're coming into town, there's a sign that um, has some, maybe some arrows and some information about where is there hourly parking or two hour or all day parking, um, where can you find that. Um, and using a consistent design uh, for those will help um, folks uh, be able to navigate the downtown more easily. Um, providing improving educational materials. So um, really working with this, we're looking at um, improving um, the public parking maps that are available, um, looking at both printable maps that could be posted online and um, even in businesses or uh, community center or library or, or in a variety of locations. Um, and also looking at uh, potentially looking at interactive maps that people can um, get to on the phone as they're coming into town and understand, okay, here's parking right here. Um, and there's a lot of channels that we can kind of tap into that already exist to get that information out to visitors and uh, shoppers and uh, people who are coming to check out the thing. Um, related to that, um, a lot of towns have had success with doing kind of a branding initiative related to parking. Um, so that gets at kind of the consistent um, signage um, so that people are able to easily navigate that. Um, some towns have named their public parking lots and that kind of helps um, when people are referring to, oh, there's parking in, the, um, in this lot and it's associated with the street name or a, a prominent feature like a river or something like that. Um, that's uh, been um, pretty helpful actually, for some communities. Um, there's also kind of a park and walk experience in Milton where you have this nice walk along Main Street and where we want folks to come in, park and, and you know, explore the town. Just don't just go to one business and you know, have a day checking out Main Street and the River District and whatnot. So if, to the degree where you can promote that experience where you can park and walk, um, that will be beneficial for everyone. Uh, so those are objectives related to improving the utilization of uh, existing parking. Um, under objective two, expanding supply of parking. Um, the town should monitor for low cost land purchase or leasing opportunities um, where parking, additional public parking could be added. Um, and we have the phrase in there, the highest and best use of the land. Um, so one thing we want the town to think about is if you're going to invest public dollars in acquiring land or doing construction, you know, is parking the best uh, option for that spot? If, is there, if there's a high demand and it's, uh, the layout of the lot is conducive to parking, it might be the best use. Um, but maybe you know, a park would be better there or be better just left as private land. So priority locations, we're looking at East and Main Street, um, in the vicinity of the Opera House uh, for event parking. Um, and um, we, we're interested in having the town pursue um, using the rear lot here at the community center potentially for this purpose. Um, and basically, you just want to look at is does the parcel, is the parcel conducive to parking? Is there already parking on it? What would the cost be to develop it? Um, is there that demand for it there? You know, is it a good investment on, on the part of the town? Um, there may be an opportunity for reconfiguration of parking lots and more parking. So this is the um, parking lot off Pleasant Street behind the Group Theater. Um, we are want the town to pursue um, an engineering study to see if you could, um, using one-way travel lanes and angle parking, um, strike a lot more parking to that lot. Um, there is the purchase of the barn uh, off the Hillview's Terrace there that could allow that lot to be expanded more, and you could do more with maybe some minor lot line adjustments. So with a strategy like this, you could add uh, 10 to 30 spaces to this lot without really a significant public investment. Uh, there might be some other opportunities for doing this in some of the other parking lots in town, but this was the one that jumped out as having the most available space. 
Um, some more opportunities for shared use parking. Um, so shared use parking could look like the town of Littleton um, agree, setting an agreement with a private landowner um, to use your, their lot for public parking. Um, it's a parking lot for business. It could be public parking just during after business hours or before business hours. Uh, there may also be opportunities for adjacent businesses to share um, uh, private uh, parking lots. So um, like town to be the lead in doing that that kind of outreach. Um, and so, and we're not, um, you know, saying who, you know, it's up, totally up to the individual landowner whether or not they want to do this. But an example here is you have Green Street, um, where there's a, this public parking which is full, and then right down the slope from there is a private parking lot that is empty. Um, you know, that seem, would seem like an opportunity for at least having the conversation. Hey, we could could we share um, this into the public park here during some hours? Um, the town is pursuing some different uh, roadway improvement projects. Um, so most notably the Main Street Phase Two project, which would look at improvements down on the western end of Main Street. Um, and then there's the River District um, Transportation Curves Program project, which is looking at sidewalks. Uh, so anytime you're putting in sidewalks or doing curbing improvements on the state highways, you may have an opportunity to formalize parking that wasn't already there. Um, so all we're saying is through those projects, we'd like the town to consider the opportunities for adding formalizing on-street parking where it doesn't currently exist. Um, there also is some spots on uh, state highways in the downtown where um, parking is technically permitted, but it's not striped or, or really formalized or advertised. Uh, so looking at Union Street, there's a lot of space there. Um, people do park there, but it's not, we didn't see it being very well utilized in our study. Um, and it's really, it's very close to a lot of those important destinations. So if you were to actually strike the stalls in there, you might get more people going there and parking there. West Main Street is potentially an option, uh, particularly by the Beale House. Uh, we're dealing with a much narrower roadway there, so um, we'd have, it would have to really do more of a kind of an engineering look at to see if you could actually safely uh, strike those spaces in there. Um, so we wanted to take a look also at um, what could be done uh, with the zoning code. And we're not saying today that we would propose a specific change of the zoning, um, but if there is an opportunity to establish uh, flexible minimum parking requirements, um, it's something that the town should maybe take a look at. It. And um, the rationale here is there's a pretty highly utilized supply of public parking that uh, businesses, customers, residents are relying on. Um, there is, uh, we think, um, a trend of increased uh, real estate investment and business development in the downtown that's going to increasingly uh, constrain that supply. Um, and so what could be done in terms of developing flexible requirements that um, kind of support that public parking, but also don't aren't overly burdensome um, on economic growth in the town. So a couple of considerations for that. Um, we want the town to do a lot more engagement with both residents and the business community before doing any kind of proposals on this, um, to see you know, what are the needs of, of, those, of those groups and what's the um, kind of develop a strategy that can work for everyone. You can look at thresholds for whether um, who you apply your requirements to. So if a business or a proposal doesn't really appear to have a lot, a lot of high parking demand, um, maybe there can be a, there's alternatives for uh, providing exemptions to that. Um, through conditional per use permitting, you can only you can apply the parking requirements only to uses that would be expected to generate a lot of additional parking demand. Um, you could look at impact fees in lieu of providing parking spaces. So if it's not an appropriate space to build parking they can pay into the parking meter fund or uh, a separate fund to fund more parking, public parking improvements. And you can do some design standards just to make sure that that parking is being provided um, in a safe uh, and efficient manner. So really just looking at what we're kind of proposing is the start of a process to take a, a new look at this. We're not saying we don't have a specific proposal about here's exactly how this would roll out, um, but we think it's time to just have that conversation uh, with the community. Um, electric vehicle charging. Uh, so um, electric vehicles are um, slowly and steadily being more adopted um, in New Hampshire. Um, we've seen pretty, uh, we'll get some data for it. It's a pretty steady trend of increasing. Um, and in a town um, that is, does rely um, to some extent on the tourist economy, you want to make sure that folks who um, might be looking to drive their electric car on the road trip or their trip up to Littleton or down to Littleton um, have an opportunity to park it. So um, with this, uh, um, timing these with um, parking lot improvement projects um, tends to work well because it kind of minimize the cost. A lot of times you have to run electrical conduit under the parking lots. Um, and they can pay them, they can typically end up paying for themselves through um, by putting a parking meter on it. 
Um, this is another proposal that we talked about a lot, um, and this was an idea to take some residential streets and basically convert one lane of them to a parking lane. Um, and there's a lot of considerations with this one. Um, you have to look at traffic flow, whether or not the residents and businesses on that road would support it, uh, winter maintenance, steep grades. Um, so what we're asking the panel to do is evaluate the feasibility, effectiveness, effectiveness and public support for maybe uh, converting a couple streets um, north of Main Street to one way um, for this purpose. Um, so a lot of that would have to be talked about there, and uh, we certainly would want to move forward unless the folks who are um, living or, or are in the distance on those roads uh, support them. Uh, at the Opera House, I um, had a good conversation with, uh, with Sue uh, about um, parking challenges at the Opera House. And one thing that they're seeing a lot of is just um, kind of long-term parking, where people are uh, parking for either the whole weekend or uh, extended period of times, which that small parking lot really limits the capacity of it and limits the ability of people who are coming there for an event to park there. Um, it's also directly adjacent to really our highest demand areas for parking. So our thought was you could convert the whole parking lot to public parking. Um, you could add parking meters um, to discourage that long-term parking. And you basically give the Opera House the staff the ability to control um, the, the parking situation there. So if they have an event, they can bag the meters and put up a sign or, or do whatever they need to do to say, hey, this is event parking. Um, and we don't, we don't want to charge people who are coming for events there, so they'd be able to um, kind of bag the meters and uh, provide free event parking. Um, the town is uh, continuing to pursue a uh, project um, on the other side of the river um, to develop uh, um, some sort of public park facility uh, near the covered bridge. Um, some of the initial designs for that um, involve putting in a, a, a large uh, paved parking lot. Um, and so our recommendation is to, through that process, let's see if there's an opportunity to use that as public parking. Um, and it would be important to uh, look at wayfinding signage, um, but it's very close to uh, the River District, um, and it's just a short walk over the covered bridge. Uh, so um, if it does, if it is determined to be appropriate to use that space for parking, uh, we can get some signage up uh, on both sides of the river, and you can encourage the businesses there to say, hey, there's parking right across the river, take a nice little scenic walk. Um, on your way um, to visit us. So um, basically, we're just asking that they take a look and see if that is um, a feasible option to promote it as public parking. Um, and we wanted the town to take a look at developing some sort of uh, central park and ride or transit facility. So uh, there's a number of different bus services that access the town and provide different types of service. Um, in addition, you have the, uh, a lot of tour buses um, at different times of year. Um, and so some kind of centralized facility that's accessible via the pedestrian network and kind of provides a dedicated spot um, where each of these uh, bus companies is going um, would really, I think, be beneficial to all. Um, and it would provide, it would just make things a little bit more easy for residents in accessing those services. Uh, for example, the concrete coach now is, you pick that up at the urban station next to the highway. Um, there's no formal parking really in the vicinity of that. Uh, area, so that's, that's kind of a challenge if you want to get on the concrete coach and get down to concrete and Boston. So that was all our, our recommendations related to um, expanding the supply of parking. Um, our third objective, improving the safety of parking. Um, we think there should be improvements to lighting and infrastructure conditions in the part of public parking areas. Um, priority areas would be Clay Street, um, where there's really uh, pretty poor lighting at the moment, but it's just discouraging folks from using that parking lot. Pleasant Street, um, there could be improvements to the pavement and fencing just to make it a little bit more attractive and get uh, <laughs> more people to, to use that space as well. Um, improving pedestrian connections. Uh, so as we mentioned before, overall the pedestrian connections are pretty good, um, but where needed, um, if we think it's important to make sure that uh, people are encouraged to use those spaces and they can access the parking lot safely. Uh, on Clay Street, um, looking at in constructing a sidewalk or even just a kind of a temporary barrier along the side of the road would, uh, would go a long way. There's also an informal path going from Clay Street to School Street um, that people are using now that goes out of the parking lot. Um, if you were to formalize that and make it a little bit more safer and advertise that, you provide some public parking that's actually uh, pretty close to the library and post office. Um, overall for the downtown, um, keeping sidewalks in a state of good repair is really important, especially maintaining BDA compliance. Uh, for folks who are a little bit more limited mobility and proper winter maintenance, especially where um, you got steep sidewalks. 
Um, other objective number four, um, supporting parking projects and maintenance through capital improvements and planning and increasing revenue. So this is kind of getting into how we pay for all of this. Um, so we think there should be some targeted areas where parking meter fees get increased to 50 cents per hour. Um, and there are a couple uh, limited locations where maybe some strategically adding some new parking meters would be beneficial as well. Um, so the rationale for this is that um, the current rate of 25 cents per hour is, is very low. It's about as low as you'll, you'll find anywhere that has parking meters. Um, a, a little bit of an increased um, uh, rate encourages um, folks to turn over a little bit, kind of discourages uh, longer term parking um, in some of those high demand areas where we don't want people parking all day in front of a, a business. You want that kind of turnover so more folks can get in there and park. Um, and it would increase revenue. So we estimate uh, all, the, all the recommendations are implemented as we propose them. You get about $50,000 a year in additional revenue. Um, you can, that can either go into annual budgeting and maintenance or it can be saved over the course of a couple years to implement um, several of the larger projects. And that's why the parking almost becomes its kind of self-contained system where it's paying for itself and you're limiting the need for uh, kind of taxpayer funded warrant articles uh, that pay for that. Um, so just to go through where we're, what we're proposing, kind of on the eastern portion of Main Street where we see that really high demand, uh, I think 50 cents an hour would be appropriate in there. Um, Porter Street, uh, we heard a lot from the businesses off Porter Street that the two hour time restriction is really um, a challenge for their businesses, so we're just proposing that that time restriction increase to four hours there. Um, Amnesty Street, way down the road, uh, if the demand in there is, is, is really significant and it's just locked up all day and nobody's, and people are just parking there all day and nobody can park for those businesses, maybe look at meters, but that's, we're not uh, recommending that as a short term uh, strategy at the moment. Um, community center, uh, potentially you could look at leasing the, the rear lot and installing um, parking meters in the back here. Um, it's a pretty high demand area. Uh, we talked about the Opera House and then uh, Green Street is another potential location where you could look at installing parking meters. You see on Green Street, people basically parking there all day um, and it's not really turning over. Um, and there's some businesses in that vicinity that would benefit from having that parking turn over a little bit more frequently. Um, in terms of fines, uh, we propose increasing $5 fines to $10. Um, we don't think $5 is really discouraging anyone from doing anything. Um, $10 is still pretty reasonable, um, but um, it would generate a little bit more revenue and, and perhaps um, encourage a little bit better parking behavior. Um, our other recommendation is to reference uh, the plan in the annual budgeting and five-year capital improvements planning processes. So um, the town's budget committee gets together to look at the parking plan and see what's able to be, what's able to be implemented that year than the budget that's being proposed. Uh, and then the town is looking at starting a five-year capital improvements planning process for some of those longer-term multi-year budgeting type projects. So this will help inform that process as well. Um, this is another strategy the town could look at doing um, if there seems to be an issue with um, parking meter collection hours. Um, you could increase them by one hour, generate a little bit of extra revenue. Um, not something we see as an immediate need now, but it's a strategy the town could use um, that um, So on to our check number five, improve the management and enforcement of public parking areas. Um, our, object, our recommendations related to meter fees and parking fines are kind of related here, basically because they can help improve, uh, improve um, the turnover of parking. Um, we're recommending the, part of the police department um, and town staff monitor parking enforcement activities to value effectiveness. And basically what we do here is periodically we can take a look at, hey, where are we dishing out a lot of fines uh, or tickets? And then do we need to, you know, in these areas, improve signage? Um, that's talking about parking regulations. Um, do we need to provide more wayfinding signage so people can find different parking lots? How do we just um, you know, modify what we're doing to better support um, the public who's trying to park? Um, we can also vary hours of parking enforcement. So if you're consistently seeing um, cars parked illegally um, after Austin's done working for the day, you may occasionally want to uh, enforce in the evening or something to, to make sure that people are parking legally and safely. Um, so we talked at the very beginning very briefly about parking district and um, what we um, are proposing the town do is um, look at developing a parking district for overhead parking in off street capital and parking lots. And so basically what this would do is formalize overnight parking options for um, residents that don't have parking um, where they live. Um, so right now it's kind of an issue of um, folks are either parking in public lots and they're leaving their cars there 
and there's conflicts with snow removal and maintenance, uh, or they're just leaving their, uh, their cars there for maybe a little bit too long. Um, and, uh, or they just don't really know what their options are. Um, so by having this kind of more formal program, they know, okay, I'm always gonna help park my car here in this lot, um, and um, since I'm signed up, I can get a text or an email alert saying, hey, we're gonna be removing snow tonight, can you please move your car temporarily? Um, so we're just kind of trying to help formalize um, that uh, parking for folks who, uh, who don't have it. Um, so looking at um, parking locations for OHRVs and ATVs, um, so what we've seen kind of throughout the northern part of the state is um, some communities that have not quite been prepared for um, the amount of uh, activity that comes to their community uh, in terms of OHRVs or ATVs. It hasn't really come to Littleton yet, um, but I think proactively um, you can make sure that it's a, a good experience for those who are coming to the town via OHRV or ATV and make sure that people are being safe. Um, so a couple things that have to look at is designating a specific area for parking of the vehicles themselves. Um, trailer parking can be a challenge because they take up a lot of space. So if you can designate uh, trailer parking outside of the downtown, maybe somewhere down on Meadow Street where there's a lot of space and a big parking lot there, that could help reduce some conflicts. And if you are going to establish um, specific parking areas, let's establish a specific route for folks to get there. Um, continue to support from the Littleton Park Card Program. Uh, so the Park Card Program is basically a, it's a $10 card that you can buy and you can use it instead of change in the meter. Um, and what it does is it basically allows you to only pay for the time you use. So if you go in um, and instead of putting in uh, 25 cents for an hour, um, you can put your, your card in and if you only park for 40 minutes, you're using just a, you're just paying 17 cents or something like that. Uh, so it's a way for residents to get a little bit of a discount uh, on parking. Uh, we'd like to see um, increased promotion of this program and increased number of venues where you can purchase it. Um, so on our last objective and our last two recommendations, um, so increasing the coordination between key town entities with respect to parking. Um, basically what we're trying to do is kind of establish a framework so that the people um, who are working for the town or involved with local boards are talking to each other uh, about parking. Um, so under recommendation 6A, there is a major project that deals with parking or is a parking project. You would want to include um, police, town staff, um, planning board, zoning board, select board. Uh, if you're talking about constructing a new parking lot, you might include the Conservation Commission. Um, and you want to include the public, local business community. So there's a lot of different uh, entities. And so um, we have a whole list in there of who the town should be talking to if there is there if they need to make a major decision about parking. Um, we also need to be beneficial to periodically schedule a meeting between um, town departments uh, to talk about parking. So the police department can report back to other folks, hey, this is what we're seeing. Public works can say, okay, here's what we're planning. And just make sure people are on the same page. Um, about rolling out some uh, improvements or, or mention parking. So that's the plan. Uh, those are our recommendations. Um, and so I'll turn it back over to Mary, but we did talk about the um, uh, how we're going to run the public comment portion of the meeting. Um, so uh, we're going to use the sign in sheet um, to make sure that's got around everybody. Um, and call people in order. You can try your comment, so, and um, we'll go from there. So I think it's just getting filled out right there. Oh, okay. Take two. Thank you. I'm looking for comments only from the ones assigned to the sheet, but um, well, we're taking we're taking we're comments in the order yeah. that people sign the sheet. So is that the sign-in sheet? Yes, it is. Okay. Just to give a little picture. Um, okay. 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 Like I said before, that was a lot of information. Thanks for listening to all of it. Um, we can circle back to stuff and go in more detail. Um, by all means. Is there anybody else who wanted to sign the sign-in sheet but didn't get a chance to? Okay, thank you. I don't know everybody, so this is not, not necessarily going to... Uh, uh,
Okay, why don't I just read the names and see if they have any comments. Mary Belanger? No, oh, okay. Jack Eames? Hello. Jerry Eames? Uh, the property at the Hillview Terrace? Yes. The money was appropriated at the uh, at the time of voting. Yep. Yes. How does that stand right now? Is that, I see it's still for sale, or is it still for sale? Um, it's a good question, and I wish um, Andrew was here. Um, so I he could probably give it believe it's under contract, but. Uh, by the time? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Because I hate to see that opportunity go, because yes, sure. you put a lot of time into it, that's an essential piece of property. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I believe that it's under contract. I'm not sure they may be negotiating some, some details. I don't know, but it's, it's certainly well in process. And I'd go a second one, okay? Yeah. Is the 50 cent uh, increase, is it the increase of 50 cents in the plan, is that all in effect throughout the, the town? That's not in effect um, at all. That's just uh, our recommendation at this time. And so the town, the select board would need to um, alter the town traffic ordinance and the deputy would come to do that. So that's what we're proposing uh, they do this time. What's one of those little things right now that's sort of a subtle, subtle little uh, nice thing about hope that everybody thinks having been other places with that fee will require an hour's a big deal. And the fine is reasonable at five dollars. And because um, this fellow right here puts up the heat for somebody when they pick up that ticket. But if the way it's at right now, it's just one of those nice things about hope. It's very reasonable compared to other places. Um, feed to support our local merchants. And um, it seems to me that it's a short term gain, a long term pain in going up on that. Uh, there's some major taxpayers on the Main Street Road and talk of the owners, and uh, a lot of them play on the Main Street. And I, I just don't see the benefit of going up on that rate that can overcome that benefit of having reasonable parking fees if you're overstay or if you're staying. Um, the property owners and the employees and so on and so forth, that's what feeds them. And then the extension of one hour to six to five, now you're getting into the, the supper hour. You know, suppers. <laughs> Some young people, what is supper? <laughs> anyway, uh, you're getting to the supper hour. And uh, now they're even thinking about that. Gee, I'd like to get a bit early and you know, get in, have a drink, and sit down. And, and I've been thinking about that too. So I, I think if you if you keep the hours to 5 o'clock, that is the sort of regular business day when most stores close up. Okay. So I hate to see that going up an hour. That's quite, you know, a lot of parking places become old. Yeah, you still have to pay. Mm -hmm. okay. So just a few thoughts on that. Appreciate yeah. your thoughts on that. We do feel that an increase to 50 cents uh, in the prime area uh, would still be extremely reasonable. And it's been 25 cents for a really long time. So we feel that we don't want to, instead of increasing a little bit every year, uh, but we do appreciate your thoughts on that. Um, that's Simon. Okay. Uh, Brenda Corliss Simon. Okay. Uh, Roger Emerson? Did you have anything? Oh, the only concern I have is the parking lot that you're proposing on the private land. Uh, isn't that a private road that goes down in there? River Glen Plain? Yeah. Um, Maintained by private is what you told us. Which needs quite a bit of work and you know how much are you taking on that? So your concern is that you're going to get a lot more traffic going down there, and, and that the cost to maintain the road is going to be private road. Yes, okay. that's a that's a good good consideration. You're right. That is a private road, and the, I believe that the town does plow it. I don't know. No, the town doesn't even plow. Right. Plow it. Oh, plow it. Right. Mm -hmm. And the the owners along the road pay for that. Okay, my mistake. Mm -hmm. I thought they did it because of the community center, uh, not the uh, senior center down there. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, you know, with that one, so we're, we're basically kind of just hopping on to the park project that the town is, is pursuing <laughs> and saying, is there an opportunity for, um, you know, for public parking here? Um, but I can see how that would add, add an additional uh, burden on top of that, potentially, if people are going there just to park. Um, so that's a good thing for us to discuss. I 
gosh, I can't read this next name very well. Looks like, oh, okay. Two Joe De Palmas, one written in script and one in, one in, uh, <laughs> one in, in printing. Okay, Joe De Palma, who wrote in script. That would be you. <laughs> yes. Do you have any comments or questions? Okay. Younger Joe De Palma. I'm all set. Okay. Uh, Sukila. Um, my only comment is Alec and I had a great conversation for quite a while about the Opera House parking. Um, I don't know if anyone knows, but we've been getting busier and busier at the Opera House, so parking is um, an issue there. We advertise in our contract, we advertise in our um, homepage, on the website, um, in, in any of our paperwork that where free parking is, it's less than two minutes there. Um, but my issue with the parking, which I explained with Alex and I talked, was that when we have concerts, when we have um, you know, large workshops, meetings, people want to park as close as they can because they're unloading there. And we just, we don't have any parking spaces. Um, Wednesdays is the Historical Society is open. That's, everybody wants to park in there. But if we also have a meeting or an event going on the same day, it gets even tougher. Mm -hmm. um, so I like the idea of the meters, and I like the idea of us being able to bag the meters if we have an event or a meeting. Um, my only other concern is still the um, overnight parking um, issue. Um, we've had, I think Austin can attest, we've had to have a car tow, a couple cars towed from there. Um, and you know, I know parking is hard along Union Street for people that live down along that area. Um, but as I said, the, trying to enforce anything there you can't because it is a public parking. So, and right now a new business has opened fairly close to us and now their staff is parking there. So it's even getting worse. You walk in, you know, you're lucky if you can find a parking spot. Um, so it is, it's tough at the Opera House, so. And I think, you know, one thing, um, definitely hear that, and I think with the parking meters, you do have a way of kind of an alternative means to enforcement to limiting that longer term parking, because yeah, at 9 a.m., yeah. they're gonna start getting charged, and um, yeah, we would, I think we also looked at a two, a two hour, you know, we can think about what's the, the limit in terms of how long they yeah. can go as well. Yeah, especially for like nighttime parking. I mean, there won't be any enforcement for nighttime parking. Is that right? Other than you can't, uh, unless we do no overnight parking sign, we can have that. But there won't be any meters for people that if we have an event going on, well, I guess we can bag, bag the meters mm -hmm. is the solution. So, okay. yep, it's. I love what we talked about and what you came up with, and I think it's a, I'm hoping we'll be soon project done. It's a lot of uh, balancing of different needs. It, it is, it really is. I mean, we're, we're just, you know, I think we're in that spot where, <coughs> you know, the meetings in the tower room, the events in the grand hall, and then, you know, the historical museum, the staff, you know, it's, it's busy. Yep. So, thank you. John Hennessy. All set, thanks. Uh, Mary Sweeney? No. Oh, yeah. Kathy Dorisky. Actually, I do have a comment. Oh, okay. um, Kathy? Totally like Sue's comment, um, and this one about the back parking lot here, and putting meters in, and then <coughs> bagging them. So if you bag the meters, because you have an event going on, let's say, what's to stop anybody from just coming in and parking there? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough question. You know, I think um, places will use signage about parking only. Um, and that, it, but it is, you know, it's a consideration for staff for sure. Um, we we do have a sign for Riven parking here, and okay. people, people drive by it. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't, we do, doesn't the same do anything. Thing. We yeah. do the same yeah. thing. We, we have a live yeah. sign, but yeah, and we they drive right through it. They do. We <laughs> <They do. laughs> go right past it. Yeah. And what we, and what we talk about in the plan is, you know, anything related to using that parking lot, we would, the town would obviously need to coordinate and, and discuss with folks from the community center about is that going to work or not. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, good, good to know. Linda um, More of a question than a comment. When you did your study, did you assess how much of the public parking was being taken up by employees of the businesses? And did you 
think about maybe providing a private area for employees only of businesses? Uh, so to answer the first question, we did not look specifically at that. Um, that you know, our method was to, you know, here's a parking space, and is there a car in it or not? Um, and so we did not look at whether or not there wasn't a way to really determine if that was an employee or not. Um, we did talk about employee only parking, and you know, I think what we settled on was you know taking strategies to um, just increase the over overall supply of publicly available parking would help get at that. Um, when you start restricting it, then you you know you have to ensure that that. Is, you know, we want that to be utilized at all times if you're going to be um, providing additional parking and have that be the primary use for that piece of land. So where we kind of settled was increase the overall supply of available parking and you'll provide more options for employees. Hey, Curly. Oh, the only question and concern I have is we have an easement in the Opera House parking lot. Um, so my concern is we have a tenant that lives upstairs of the business and to do meter parking lot there, I agree with it, but we do have an easement. Yeah, so I think we would just look at the public living. But I don't think parking. yours would be metered, I think, right? Yeah, just whatever, whatever is yeah. there for public okay. use, yeah. that's what, yeah, we wouldn't want to right. do that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Angel Larko? Uh, Rudy? Yes, I've got a two questions. Wouldn't, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, you said that 90% uh, of this project is going to be through the DOT? Uh, so just for 90 percent. So for paying for the work to develop this plan, not going forward. 90 percent so of my, the my time to help the town out. 90 percent was DOT. Or just for the study? Just for the just for the study and plan. And yeah. you don't know how much all this project is going to cost. Or something. No, I mean we didn't. We you know we we kind of assigned that into low cost, medium cost, high cost, and uh, you know most are in that lower cost bin, but. Yeah, it was a little bit beyond the scope of what we could do to price out every single uh, thing we looked at. Also, just kind of general terms. Also, another thing that I noticed that I went out after uh, John Anderson said to me, me man, I went out talking about 100 flyers around to make sure that the business people, which this is, it should be really important for all of them, you know, the parking. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't see no pattern, I'm a little blind. That's it, two or three people that they have a business in Main Street or they park, you know, down in Saranac. I talk to these people, they would come, you know, they make a comment and stuff like that. Do by any chance you guys related to the business people, you know, uh, on a side, you know, just to talk to them uh, uh, without, you know, put anything. Uh, Expose it to the public and stuff like that. I don't see nobody. I put it over 100 flies. I made copies and I went around and I put them on the doors to make sure that they come over here and they, you know, talk to you guys and what's going on about the park. Yeah, well, thank you for doing that. Um, and, and, you know, I don't see kind of no interest. <laughs> Well, so we did meet. We did have a meeting um, in the fall that was specifically for uh, the local business community. I think probably had about, about 20 people uh, come to that. Um, so we had, you know, it was a pretty good turnout. We filled up the room we had, um, and um, yeah, we had a good discussion then. Um, yeah, and, and we went around and did a similar thing um, at the end of last month. We went you know, up, up and down Main Street in the River District and handed out flyers to folks and in stores and. Um, you know, passing the, giving to the property owner, the store owner, and, um, you know, so we, we put the word out there. Um, people also had the option of, of looking at the plan online, and they could say, you know, oh, this looks good, or uh, we could get um, a couple folks reaching out by email, and they still have that option for a couple of days, so. I also believe that uh, the 50 cents raised to the parking meter, it's excellent way to alleviate, you know, the taxation for you know for a mortgages and stuff like that. It's, it's still is cheap. Right. I got a Concord a lot. It costs a dollar, you know, to yeah. to park the car. You know, it's, it, that's a good thought. Thank you. There's somebody sitting beside you that didn't sign. sign. Yeah, I'm on the bottom. Hmm? I just, I'm on the bottom. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, there it is. Sorry, David. Go on. 
gold. Oh, gold, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, with all due respect and all the humility for a Littleton transplant, I've only been here a couple of years, so I'm all about your guys the, the pain of, of, of parking, and I think that's a wonderful problem to have, and I think that's what I've always said to Alex from the very beginning, at least that's the problem. Um, my fear is, it, it, Littleton in the last two years since I've been here has grown so much, and it's this problem's gonna get, it's gonna slam us in the face. I have problems all the time. A lot of people have, have met me drive problems with this parking scenario. I was very surprised to see when you put up the slides that things are underutilized. Yeah, here we are. We have a parking problem, but is the message out there is underutilized? That's what you see from this report, that you see all this underutilized space. So I'm wondering if people are thinking, hey, everything's just fine. We've got all this space. It's not being used. There's a problem. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Um, I, I don't have the answers, but my concern is, is again, the population in this room is, is a lot smaller than I thought it would be tonight. Yes. I was well, we hoping were, for a little more rigorous discussion. Yes. And, and uh, We were surprised uh, that there was, A, as much parking available, and B, that it was, uh, to a large extent, underutilized, and yet there are places where, you know, there are, are severe issues. I, I'm just wondering if that, the, if that, that four nights Four days is a good research sampling. Sure. Uh, August is when we're just starting to grow. I get it. In the winter, we can park a trail in the middle of downtown and nobody cares. This last weekend, this weekend, today, right now, parking's crazy. It isn't, I don't think we have an underutilized. I think we have we have an issue with it. Um, I was surprised to see that parking meters were down the road on some areas that I think that need to be. Unfortunately, some of these residents versus businesses. It's businesses that supply this place and businesses that need to have the people come in. Um, so I'm surprised that a lot of the river district isn't going to be metered sooner. I always thought that was going to be the first answer. And it appears that maybe it might be a later answer. In, in all due respect, Jack, 25 cents is it's crazy. <laughs> it's it's, 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 uh, uh, it is, it's a bit, a chance to develop a little more revenue just by going 50 cents. I've always thought that a buck an hour would be just fine for people that are coming to Littleton and parking. And let those that want to take advantage of immediate parking and, and take advantage of the shops do that one. You pay the buck and let the people that are coming in for the day utilize the unknown, underutilized parking signages probably the key there, although nobody reads my sign, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for your time, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Marie Slack? Hi, Marie. Do you have any questions? Yes. Um, I, I'm lucky I came in when I did because I got to see objective number three, which was about the safety concerns. Mm -hmm. And on Main Street, it talked about the downtown area maintaining proper winter maintenance. And that, I guess, is my objective or reason for being here. Uh, there's a few, very few handicapped spots on Main Street. But when I see people parking up on snow banks because the overnight snow has not been removed, and it's watching a scary situation with a handicapped person trying to get out of their vehicle and then climb over snow bank to get into the sidewalk area. <coughs> Why isn't there more done in the winter time to keep that curb to the roadway clear at nighttime since there's no overnight parking on Main Street? Why isn't there something done to better make that available? You, you have to look in your mirror, your side mirror, before you even open the door on your car to get out in the winter time because <coughs> you're encroached right out towards the traffic. And if you get somebody going by with a plow, either you're going to lose your life or lose your car door, one or the other. It's very scary out there. And this is just my first winter being here. And I hate to see somebody get killed. That'll be permanent on my brain. Thank you. Those are but is that something that we can work yeah. Is there uh, something we can do about the winter snow removal? So that's the town of Wilton yeah. that, that does that. And that call will be passed on to the town manager. But you bring up a good point. Um, when it comes to, it, it isn't about so much about the snow removal for safety concerns, but uh, which I agree with you. Um, but 
uh, when we're talking about newer uh, methods for metering and technology that we have out there, um, I'm looking for some comment maybe from you guys on things like kiosks, where uh, this group has done an outstanding job researching the different types of methods that are used currently. And kiosks tend to make somebody have to walk to a location and get a ticket to come back and put it in your vehicle. Mm -hmm. So some input would be good on that. And also, there's technology out there where we don't even have to put infrastructure in. We can just use our cell phones to, to log when people get pay for a parking spot in a particular area. So we, are, we're eliminate, we could eliminate unsightly meters, but there's always the question of, are we ready for that technology? And um, is uh, Old Man Winter going to be a bear if you're going to climb over a snowbank to go to a, a kiosk and then come back? Or maybe there are particular areas where that's not an issue, like the parking lot back here, where a kiosk could work. Um, would anybody like a second term? Oh, I'm David. Oh, I'm sorry. Was on there. That's all right. But the one concern this is your, I have. This is your first term. <laughs> um, the one concern I have is that we don't, while we're fixing all this, we don't disadvantage businesses that are located downtown and make it more advantageous to be out of the downtown area. Um, because you don't have all of these issues that we're talking about. So but the problem with adding more expense to the visitor or to, you know, even more importantly, a local citizen who says, I'm not going downtown because i got to pay 50 cents every time I get out of my car down there. And so I, I think over time, if we're not careful, we could disadvantage the competitiveness of our beautiful downtown. Certainly not something that we want to do. And. Uh, the role of the parking meters is not just to raise money, but to keep the turnover in, uh, in the prime parking areas at an optimal level. Um, I was personally surprised when we had our, our uh, first uh, information session with uh, the general public, and a large number of people weren't troubled at all about uh, paying parking meter or paying twice as much as they're paying. Um, I personally have never have never paid a parking meter in Littleton. Not because I park there illegally, but because I'm a tightwad and, <laughs> and I'll go and walk so I walk a couple minutes from the from the free parking lot. But I guess that's the whole point: is people have a choice. They can pay for the meter if that's what's important to them. Is be quick in and out, and they don't mind the 25 cents or the 50 cents. Or if they're a tightwad like me, they can walk a couple minutes from the public parking. But yes, it's, it's all a balancing of everybody's needs is what we're trying to address. Um, anyone else have a second yeah. comment? Yes, Jerry. I well, you may have touched on it with the, um, the mural land. Is there, what's the state of that right now? Um, that's a good question. Um, yeah, and my, uh -huh. the town is working on yeah the proposal they got um, land and water conservation fund grant to um, believe it's for the pavilion portion of that park project. Um, I don't have a, yeah a very recent status update on that. And parking, what would be uh, the prospect of that over there? Municipal parking lot? Yeah. So what I mean when they produced, I think the initial set of plans for that, I think it had a, a ninety something space parking lot, and so you know. All we're saying with this process is consider whether or not that might work well as being advertised as general public parking lot, or just you know it's, it will be a public parking lot, but is it just going to kind of serve that park area there, um, or does it get widely promoted as an area you can park further in the district or cottage street? I'll be a huge fan. Huge. Very handy walk across. The yeah, beautiful one. Yes, beautiful. You're right. The bridge. <laughs> Um, nice way to enter. Yes. Anybody? Yes. I, I was going to have this on one. Is the, uh, as far as apps go, parking apps, um, I had wrote myself a note, uh, Burlington, I know we're not close to Burlington, but they recently just switched, in this last year, they switched over from Kiosk to Park Mobile, and I made a note of it when I was up there, which does all their parking lots, all the parking, and it, it, you just, put it in, it tells you what the free parking is, it tells you what the pay parking is. When you park in that spot, you pay right then and there and you're done. Um, 
I don't know, I don't know the cost of it or anything like that, but it seemed that they shut down everything just to do that. And you can go and you put it in, and they tell you where the free parking is, this parking is, and boom, you plug it in and you just drive. So it's good. this one happens to be called Park Mobile. I'm sure there's a million of them. Um, but I also know the Park Mobile after it's all over, so. Um, it is 20, almost 2020, so. That's a good point. I think that's something we regroup, we should talk about. Yeah, we have done some discussion of that, but um, not <coughs> extensive. It, it um, kills all the infrastructure poles and whatnot, and it's just numbered yeah. signs and numbered lots. Okay. You look. Lot, whatever. Quick and handy. No climbing over snow banks. No, there, yeah, yeah, well, that. I get that too. That's, that's, that's New England. Anybody else? I, I have just a question on the Pollyanna parking cards. How how many people actually get those? Do you know what the number is for just around approximate residents? I mean, I use mine. Probably. Yeah, it's been varying from year to year. Um, I haven't sold a whole lot really? um, in the last couple of years. I don't know if it just dropped off or if, or if it's because um, some of the store owners chose not to sell them for us anymore or what the story is. But um, I, I'd never heard of them. Oh, I, mean, I, 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 I love mine because, like you said, if I run the store and I'm 18 minutes to grab something, Well, I, I try to promote it, especially if somebody gets a ticket. I'll ask them if they're from the area sometimes. Yeah. And they'll say, yeah, I'm from Dalton or Whitefield or wherever. Well, uh, do you come to Littleton a lot? And they'll say yes or no. And I'll say, well, if you do, you might want to consider purchasing a Littleton Park card. Yeah. Right now, it's equal to 40 hours of parking, yeah. and it's a cost of $10. Yeah. And then I explain to them how to use it. And some do purchase it. Some to say, well, no, I don't really come that much. Yeah. They have no expiration, yeah. so I mean, you could buy one for ten dollars, and if it takes you three years to use it, oh well, it takes you three years I to have, use it. I've had mine for a couple of years, and I still have like six dollars on it or something. I don't know. But um, so you're going to be promoting those parking cards more? That's our, that's our recommendation. Okay. Okay. I have been revisiting with some of the store owners that have sold them for us in the past mm -hmm. um, to see if they would consider doing that again. Yeah. Um, so it, it, that's in the process, okay. and we're look, always looking for new opportunities to have other store owners to sell for it. I do have one one other question about the snow on Main Street because I, I do agree with that that it, it's been this year. I thought it was even more um, a lot of snow, and in order to get onto the sidewalk to put money in the meter was was a chore. Yeah. And whose responsibility is it to shovel the openings in if they if the if the town can't get there because of whatever, they're working from a storm and they can't get there to clean up. Whose responsibility is it the store owner or somebody that can make a path in the snow banks to get onto Main Street? That's a public works component. So most of courtesy, isn't it? Well, mm -hmm. as a store owner, mm -hmm. I will no. say that while we might try, mm -hmm. there's no place to then put the snow. No, right. Exactly. So we're then creating a higher if the, snow, if the store owner is willing to do business and wants to do business, it might behoove the owner yeah. to go out and shovel a little bit. But I just yeah, I just no place to put it. Just put it in the road and add to the people. On the side. Yeah. Yeah. I know that they're driving. Snow removal is, is a bleach web of, you know, yeah. getting stuff uh, organized and going to get it out of there.
might see a little more action there. There, there was a video, because my husband made it, about the parking cards and their availability and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So maybe just re-playing uh, yeah. that again that, at that regular on, intervals. Was that run on the public channel? Oh, maybe it channel. Yeah, 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 channel two, that's right. Well, now it's not. It's on channel two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Other comments, questions? I don't say complaints. Yes, thing. Rudy. Nobody, nobody ever saw the parking enforcer clean the sidewalk. I saw. Every time I go downtown, that poor guy over there that's supposed to check the mirrors is with the shower. And actually, if he remembers correct, I said, you're not supposed to do that. You remember? That guy every day was cleaning every meter with the snow and stuff like that. He worked very hard, very hard. And I can't remember them to do that. And nobody else saw that, just me. I've seen, I've seen Austin over here. Austin here works across the blocks. Yeah, Austin, yeah. Thank you very much for hero. that. Yes. Thank, yes. You. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, because it's the truth. It is. That's the truth. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, well you have until the 20th to uh, get your written comments in, if you would like to, to Alex. And if people haven't uh, actually seen this on the town website, uh, yeah, it's good to go in and, and look at it slide by slide and, and kind of take a little longer to uh, have it sink in and maybe at that point you'll have some more questions and comments. And thank you all for coming, I appreciate it. And uh, we'll close the, uh, close the uh, public portion of the hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you, Alex. Yeah, so, uh, well, that's, I said I've got one to serve up for pretty now. Why don't we just talk about Wall Street? Uh, no, I don't. No, we do. You want to spill that? Yeah. Hey, why are you on this? Thank you. 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 Thank you.